Welcome to our video, Scoring Student Work for the Biology Collection of Evidence. This type of short answer question is only found on the Collection of Evidence and not on the EOC. The focus of this video is to provide guidance for scoring student short answer responses using rubrics. We will review one scenario, an associated item, and several student responses to that item. In this video, we will take a close look at the relationship between a scoring rubric and student responses for a short answer question. I will demonstrate the scoring process with six student responses for the evolutionary relationships question. You will then review other student responses in the same way. The goal is to determine the score, one or zero, for each response. You should have on hand the moths and the trees scenario a copy of the Evolutionary Relationships, LS3E1, question from the COE, the Moz and the Trees sample task, the rubric for the question, and the student responses for the question. Please refer to these documents throughout the presentation. You may find it helpful to take notes or mark up your copies. If you have not already done so, please pause the video and take a few minutes to read the Moz and the Trees scenario and the Evolutionary Relationships question and write a response to the question. Write your response, not as a teacher, but as a hardworking, well-taught biology student. Please do not read the rubric until after you have written your response. When you are finished, continue to view the rest of this video. Let's begin our review with the scenario. This system scenario describes a living system. System scenarios may include systematic observations, models, or open-ended explorations of a system. There may be subsystems within the system, and the system may be part of a larger system. However, the focus of the scenario should be a single system. A label diagram defines the boundaries of the system and labels the parts of the system. This scenario, the moths and the trees, was used operationally on the Biology EOC in 2012 and 2013. You will find this scenario and the associated questions from those exams in the 2013 Biology Released Item Document. You will also find the Moz and the Trees scenario set in the 2014 updates for Biology EOC, as well as the Moz and the Trees sample COE task. In the EOC updates and COE sample task documents, questions have been added to the scenario or modified to provide additional guidance to teachers and students. This question is found only in the COE sample task and is not in the EOC updates and released item documents. Links to all of these documents can be found at the end of this module. You may find it useful to use the Moz and the Tree scenario to teach the structure of a system scenario to your students. Now let's look at the evolutionary relationships question. There are different types of tussock moths in the forest ecosystem. Charcoal brown tussock moths and white marked tussock moths can be found in the same area. Describe one type of evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is a close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. If you are working in a group, this would be a good time to pause the video and compare your responses. Now let's look at the rubric. Each short answer question rubric begins with the performance description. The performance description includes the content standard from the Washington State 2009 K-12 Science Learning Standards. The content standard describes what students are expected to know. The content standard LS3E reads, Biological classifications are based on how organisms are related, reflecting their evolutionary history. Scientists infer relationships from psychological traits, genetic information, and the ability of two organisms to produce fertile offspring. The performance description also includes the item specification. The item specification specifies the knowledge and abilities that are to be assessed by the question. LS3E item specification one reads, describe that scientists infer the degree of evolutionary relationship among organisms using psychological traits, genetic information, and or the ability of two organisms to produce fertile offspring. Links to the Washington State 2009 K-12 Science Learning Standards and the Biology Test and Item Specifications document can be found at the end of this module. The next part of the rubric, Item and Example Response, restates the question and gives sample student responses. It is important to note that the sample student response section gives a range of possible responses and is not an exhaustive list. 
the rubric and an annotated student response training set are used to guide scorers in the actual scoring of the student responses. We read through the question on the last slide, so let's go straight to the example responses. Examples. The two moths have similar genes or patterns in the DNA. The same proteins are made in both moths. When a brown moth and a white marked moth are mated, fertile offspring are produced. Charcoal brown moths and white marked moths have similarly shaped wings. The pattern of development from egg to larva to moth is the same time or stages. The points possible for the question are listed on the right side of the rubric. There is one point possible for this question. On the COE, short answer questions can be worth one, two, three, or four points. Now for the student responses. Look at response A. As I read the response out loud, keep the following question in mind. Describe one type of evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is a close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. You could do a DNA test between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth, and if the DNA is the same, that would mean they are the same species. We are looking for two parts of a complete description. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the method with a green line. DNA test. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the description of the evidence with a blue line. DNA is the same. Notice that the pronoun they has been defined as charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth in this portion of the student response. During scoring, pronouns will be defined when possible to make a student response more clear. However, students should be discouraged from including pronouns in any short answer response. The combination of these two parts fits within the parameter of the example responses from the rubric. Response A is an example of a student response that would earn one point. Now for student response B. Again, as I read the response out loud, keep the following question in mind. Describe one type of evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is a close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. Scientists could mate the two moths and if they produce fertile offspring, then the moths are related. Again, we are looking for two parts of a complete description. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the method with a green line. Could mate the two moths. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the description of the evidence with a blue line. Produce fertile offspring. The combination of these two parts fits within the parameters of the example responses from the rubric. Response B is an example of a student response that would earn one point. Next we will look at student response C. Again, as I read the response out loud, keep the following question in mind. Describe one type of evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is a close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. Observe the bodies and wing shapes. If these are alike, that would show a relationship between the moths. Once again, we are looking for two parts of a complete description. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the method with a green line. Bodies and wing shapes. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the description of the evidence with a blue line. These, bodies and wing shapes, are alike. The combination of these two parts fits within the parameters of the example responses from the rubric. Response C is an example of a student response that would earn one point. Next, we will look at student response D. Again, as I read the response out loud, keep the following question in mind. Describe one type of evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is a close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. See if the two moths look the same. They are related if the moths look alike. Once again, we are looking for two parts of a complete description. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the method with a green line. The moths look alike, referring to the moths' physical characteristics. We have not circled the part of the student's response that addresses the description of the evidence. Look the same does not point to a specific physical characteristic, so the response is too vague to earn a credit. The combination of these two parts does not fit within the parameters of the example responses from the rubric. 
Response D is an example of a student response that would earn zero points. Next, we will look at student response E. Again, as I read the response out loud, keep the following question in mind. Describe one type of evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. Use a DNA test on the moths. Once again, we are looking for two parts of a complete description. We have circled the part of the student's response that addresses the method with a green line. DNA test. The student's response did not provide a description of the evidence. Response E is an example of a student response that would earn zero points. Next, we will look at student response F. Again, as I read the response out loud, keep the following question in mind. Describe one type of evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is a close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. Could test by looking at the habitat. If both moths live on the same tree, then they must have the same gene. Once again, we are looking for two parts of a complete description. The student's response does not address the method with, by looking at the habitat. This portion of the student's response is not evidence of a relationship and did not fit within the parameters of the rubric. The student's response does not address the description of the evidence with, if both moths live on the same tree, then they, charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth, must have the same gene. This portion of the student's response is a misconception between an animal's habitat and a connection to their genetic code. Response F is an example of a student response that would earn zero points. At this time, pause the video. Read through the rest of the student responses. Look for a description of the evidence that could lead scientists to conclude that there is a close evolutionary relationship between the charcoal brown tussock moth and the white marked tussock moth. Use the rubric and responses A, B, C, D, E, and F as a guide to assign each sample student response a score. Check your answers. If you're working in a group, take some time to compare your decisions. Then, let's look at the student responses to see how each paper was scored. Let's review student response G. We have circled the parts of the student's response that successfully address the two parts of a complete description. Moth's baby addresses the method and is circled with the green line. Won't be able to reproduce more babies addresses the description of the evidence and is circled with the blue line. The student's response addresses both parts of a complete description. Response G is an example of a student response that would earn one point. Let's take a look at student response H. We have circled the parts of the student's response that attempted to address the two parts of a complete description. The genes of the parents of the moths addresses the method and is circled with the green line. The mother or father may have charcoal brown or white marked bodies or may be a different moth species. This portion of the student's response was considered too vague and not connected to genes of the parents and did not fit within the parameters of the rubric. The student's response does not address both parts of a complete description. Response H is an example of a student response that would earn zero points. Let's review student response I. We have circled the parts of the student's response that successfully address the two parts of a complete description. DNA test addresses the method and is circled with the green line. DNA is alike or DNA is different addresses the description of the evidence and is circled with the blue line. The student's response does address both parts of a complete description. Response I is an example of a student response that would earn one point. Let's continue the training with student response J. We have circled the parts of the student's response that successfully address the two parts of a complete description. Wing patterns addresses the method, specifically physical characteristics, and is circled with the green line. Same wing pattern addresses the description of the evidence and is circled with the blue line. The student's response addresses both parts of a complete description. Response J is an example of a student response that would earn one point. Let's continue the training with student response K. We have circled the parts of the student's response that attempted to address the two parts of a complete description. Get a blood sample addresses the method and is circled with a green line. Release the moths back into the wild and test the blood sample if there was a gene mutation or not. This portion of the student's response was considered too vague and an incomplete description of the evidence and did not fit within the parameters of the rubric. 
The student's response does not address both parts of a complete description. Response K is an example of a student response that would earn zero points. Let's conclude the training with student response L. We have circled the parts of the student's response that attempted to address the two parts of a complete description. The moths live in the same type of habitat. This portion of the student's response does not provide evidence of a relationship and did not fit within the parameters of the rubric. The same type of moths prefer a certain type of environment to live in and surround themselves, charcoal brown tussock moth, and the white marked tussock moth with. This portion of the student's response does not provide evidence of a relationship either and did not fit within the parameters of the rubric. The student's response does not address both parts of a complete description. Response L is an example of a student response that would earn zero points. Here are the links to the assessment documents mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. If you have any questions or comments concerning the biology collection of evidence, please contact Scott Colo, COE Science Assessment Specialist at 360-725-6316 or email scott.colo at k12.wa.us. If you have any questions or comments concerning the biology end of course exam, please contact Don Cope, Secondary Science Assessment Specialist at 360-725-4989 or email don.cope at k12.wa.us. Thank you for your participation.